Now let's talk about the other war, the Ukraine war. 2023 started on a high for Ukraine. It was planning a counteroffensive. The West was rallying behind it. The spirits were high. Ukraine felt like it could win this war. But a year later, the picture looks bleak. Ukraine has not made any gains on the battlefield. The army is accused of corruption. Things are not looking good at the front lines and Western aid is drying up. So is this the year they lose the war? Let's look at what's happening on the ground. This weekend, Russia's offensive got a major boost. It captured the town of Avdivka. It's located in eastern Ukraine. For Russia, capturing this town is a big deal. Their biggest victory since Bakhmut. That was in the month of May last year, the victory of Bakhmut. But that's not the only reason why this is significant. Avdivka is a prize because of where it's located. Let me pull up the map for you. Avdivka is located in the Donbass region. The town is a gateway to Donetsk. In 2014, Russian-backed fighters captured the city of Donetsk. They also captured Avdivka. Ukraine fought for both. It could not win back Donetsk, but it got back Avdivka. Soon the town became a crucial symbol, a symbol of Ukrainian resistance. But Moscow did not give up. Last October, it launched a wave of attacks, all of them targeted at this town. Avdivka had a population of around 34,000. Most of them fled. The town was battered, some parts of it nearly destroyed. It became a ghost town. But Russia did not stop. The battle went on for months. Last week, Moscow rammed up its attacks. Its military pounded the Ukrainian forces. It was dropping almost 60 bombs per day, 6-0 per day. By the weekend, the Russians had surrounded Avdivka. Ukrainian forces had two options, fight and die or retreat. They chose to retreat. We didn't have enough people. We didn't have enough shells. We didn't have enough possibilities to throw them back. If we had a large amount or at least an okay amount of shells, we could have stopped the enemy. But unfortunately, we didn't have them. So that's the Ukrainian version. They did not have enough people. They did not have enough ammunition. That's why Avdivka fell. But what is Zelensky saying? He is, in fact, blaming the, the, the West for this, for delaying the aid. The Ukrainian president says it's working in Russia's favor. It is now an extremely difficult situation in several parts of the front line, exactly where Russian troops have concentrated maximum reserves. They are taking advantage of delays in aid to Ukraine. And this is a very sensitive matter. Artillery shortages, the need for front line air defense, and for a longer range for our weapons. So has Russia changed the tide of this war? Capturing Avdivka was crucial. It gives Moscow dual advantage, access to Donetsk and pushi pushing back the Ukrainian front line. But more than that, this is a symbolic victory. The war is nearing its second anniversary. Ukraine has barely made any gains. Western unity is crumbling. The US can't seem to pass an aid bill. A $60 billion aid package is held up in Washington. Meanwhile, Europe can't match Washington's spending. When the war began, the EU promised nearly $53 billion in aid. So far, they've, de they've delivered only $37 billion. Perhaps this is what Putin was waiting for, for the West to falter. Does that mean Russia can win this war in 2024? Well, this is where things stand. Ukraine is on the defensive, resisting Russian attacks and trying to avoid a full-scale fight. On the other side, Russia is on the offensive. It has boosted military spending. Moscow will increase it by almost 70% this year. It is also mobilizing more troops. In December, Putin signed a decree to increase troop strength by almost 170,000. 170,000 more soldiers. That will make a total of 1.32 million Russian troops. So Russia is committed to this offensive because at the end of the day, this is a war of attrition. Whoever survives longer wins it. And at this point, it is advantage Russia.